We're coming today to you from our office, our bedroom, our living facility, and also what we call now our room where we develop the videos, where we produce them and send them down to Miami to my dear friend who's been sharing with me for five years. We just celebrated our fifth year doing videos for YouTube and broadcasting on the Wi-Fi. And it's developed as we've gone. And now since my wife passed away over a little over a year ago, we've been trying to get everything together, the cooperation of the corporation and they have cooperated and the corporate is behind us and we praise God for that, for their support and their wonderful way that they provided this opportunity for us to go on Zoom around the world alive in our broadcast. And Danny is directing all that from Miami where he downloads and then we <clears throat> share from Messenger and Facebook, YouTube, it's on Google, Carrie Miller Ministries. If you don't know that anything and this is your first time, you Google Carrie Miller Ministries and you'll find past messages. The message today, like many have already notified me and let me know that they're receiving it and they're very pleased with what we've been doing. We had an outbreak of the COVID again, and we had to move upstairs to my room from where we were broadcasting in the activity center where Sarah and Angie are working together to make this possible. We have all new furniture, and this is a new year. It's a new beginning for all of us for sunrise, for all of us living here, Daniel would have, wouldn't have any idea of the changes that have been made in our facility in the last two weeks. It's just unbelievable. They've been bringing in, taking out old furniture, and bringing in new furniture. Our dining room is first class, A number one. Our entrance room where our receptionist sits, where the fireplace lives <laughs> and it's alive and well, let me tell you. They've moved in all this beautiful new furniture and lounging chairs where people can come in and see all the facilities and go through and see all the wonderful improvements that have been made. Man, they've changed furniture, pictures, offices. It's unbelievable. And so they're in the process of setting up our room in the activity center. And we may have to broadcast from somewhere else in the days to come because it's not big enough to hold all the wheelchairs and everything in our facility. And we're going to have to do something, maybe have two services like they do at church. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? An early service and a late service. And we could broadcast. I mean, this thing's developing so fast that it makes my head swim. But I hope this morning, as we take these moments to talk about the conditions here in our facility, in our state of Colorado, where there's an outbreak of the COVID right now, and it's, it's increased, and there, it's affecting all of our facilities. The churches are affected by it. The schools are affected by it. Everybody's affected by this pandemic that will not go away. So what do we do in this 2022 year that we have just entered? Do we throw up our hands and quit? Absolutely not. Let me tell you, friend, we're still in the race that has to be run. We're still in the battle that has to be won. We're still out there in the field laboring for our master 
from the dawn till setting sun. I told our director yesterday that we need to have for our theme song a very special hymn that was written about the sunrise from Sunrise Living Facility that we shall face one day. I'll just sing a little of it. This ought to be our theme song because we didn't come here to die. We came here to live abundantly till Jesus comes back and takes us to an even better facility if that's possible. And I'm sure it is with God because all things are possible to them that believe. That's what the Bible says. Now, friends, listen, I'm more excited than I've ever been in my life. I got my machine where they lifted me out of the bed when I first came and out of my recliner. It's out of here. It's gone. It's not in my room any longer. If you take a panoramic view of my room from door to window, all facilities from my bookcase, my lamps, all that we see here, even the decor on my bed has been all new since I came. And it's getting better every day. You know, it's like that old chorus, if it keeps going, getting much better, Lord, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And we just thank God for his presence, for his presence in our heart, for the power that's within us, that he's working in us and with us and through us in this mighty project that we have to get the gospel out and obey the Great Commission. You see, everything in the Christian life, abundant life, is trust and obey. We can sum it up in those words. You know, when Christian believers came from the British Isles to found the colonies in America. You know what they were doing? They were trusting that they had seen God working and they wanted the freedom and they wanted the liberty to worship as they believed God wanted to worship. To worship in freedom and in truth and to take God at his word. And we have it on the money that we use in America. On the folding money it says, in God we trust, even on our coins, in God we trust. And you know what our problem is? We stop trusting and obeying God. You know, our behaviors, ever since the Garden of Eden, God says, you're gonna have to eat of every tree in this garden, but trust me now, if you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you're gonna die spiritually, spiritual death, not physical death. That's the ultimate end of spiritual death. You know, God says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Paul said in Romans, the wages of sin is death. You know, people said, well, I've been trying harder. I said, yeah, and you're working for wages. And the wages of sin are death. Now, if that's what you want, go to it. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's our master. We're to obey him. So if we trusted God and obey his commandments, if you love me, he said, you will keep my commandments. And my commandments will not be a burden to you. But take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, last week we talked about how we put out the fire in our soul and our body and our spirit, so to speak. The fire has gone down and we're quenching his spirit's power in our body, our soul, and our spiritual being. We're no longer walking in obedience in America. We're no longer trusting God. Some people think they can just act like God is dead, but he's very much alive. He's not dead.
Beloved, I ask you this. Do you know the scripture in Ephesians? The letter that Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus? You know what he says? We've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. God has put a seal on us that we belong to him. Now I want you to know anything God puts his seal on has to be right and perfect and pleasing to him. And he can't, he can't help us to be what we ought to be when we stand before him to receive our reward for our righteousness and our faith. We've got to be blameless, Paul said in our passage last week. He said, I pray that your whole body, soul, and blameless, I mean body, soul, and spirit be blameless at his appearing. Now, how can we be blameless? Trusting and obeying. You see, in the garden in the beginning, the book of Genesis tells us that people that God created, Adam and Eve, the first human beings that were recorded in God's word, created to live on this planet Earth. They had all the privileges, all the provision, all the peace and joy that they could muster. You know why? Because they were following God. The Bible says they walked with God. Friend, you're going to walk with God. you got to trust him to lead the way. you got to trust in him to take you where you need to go. Are we doing that in our lives today in 2022? Or are we quenching the spirit in America? Those of us who know God and originally came here to worship God in freedom, to worship God as we believe he's taught us in his word. So it's all trust and obey. You know, people say, well, it's too complicated. No, it's not complicated. You know, God had a plan. That's not complicated. If he could create the universe and create man and breathe into him the breath of life, then his living breath, the Holy Spirit, that he poured out at Pentecost upon all who believed while they were waiting in the upper room. They were trusting that God was going to come. He said, if you'll let me go away now, I'll send the Holy Spirit. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and power, John the Baptist said. If you'll follow him and obey him, the one who's coming after me is mightier than I. He's so wonderful and Unbelievable that I'm not even worthy to stand and to wipe his sandals and wash his feet. He tried to teach him that. He really did. He gave him the foot washing as an example. He said, you need to do what I've just done. Are you humble enough? See, he has shown me, this is this verse from the Old Testament scripture. He has shown thee, O oh man, what is good. You know what's good? To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. That word humble means bow down, you're going. We always walk with our head down, just so to speak, to see where our steps are leading us as God leads us along. We're following in his steps. But when we get to a place of glory, like Moses did when he went up on the mountain and heard the very verse, the very word of God, the voice of God with his own ears, and he saw the miracle working power of God as he wrote with his own finger. You need to see that movie, The Ten Commandments. How Cecil B. DeMille depicted it in that movie, The Ten Commandments. You ought to look at that about 
four or five times before you move another inch spiritually, before you try to go on. Be sure you understand that our God is a refining fire. The book says, the Bible, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. America better hear those words, friend. They weren't forgetting God when they came over here and they started, oh, they made some enemies. The Indians were here before we were and God created them too. And we need to let our brothers who were the first occupants of this land, as we know it, we owe them an apology and we ought to tell them, hey, you know, we, we just didn't really know any better at that time. But now that we know, red, yellow, black, and white, they're precious in his sight. Jesus loves even the little children of the world. Jesus said we have to become like little children. You know, when little children come into the world, they have to learn to obey. Well, he just, you know, he's just a baby. We excuse that. The Bible says that when we're born again in Christ, spiritually, we're just babes in Christ. Babes have to learn to obey. Paul says in Romans, if we are without discipline, for God disciplines every son whom he receives, he's going to teach us how to walk in the spirit. Friend, if you don't know his word, you don't know the first thing about obeying God's voice. Beloved, I love you now. I'm not fuzzing at you. I'm reminding myself, you know, when I point at you, there are four fingers, my thumb and three other fingers pointing at me. See that? I better practice what I'm preaching to you or God will deal with me, friend. Believe you me, he'll discipline me and say, preacher, you quit practicing what you're preaching. I'm going to put you through the fire test. Is your faith what it ought to be? A few weeks ago, you preached to this same group of people, some of them who were listening at that time, that we'd better love God and obey his voice. And we better find out what God's up to in our life and trust him to finish it because he's the one that started it and he's the only one that knows where we ought to go. And as the song says, he leads me that I cannot fall the poem. And so to him, I leave it all. Remember the poem, whatever my God ordains is right. His will is ever just. He cannot will me all but good. It's not God's nature to will anything else for us. He wants the best he has for us. He's gone to prepare as wonderful as this place is where I've been living today. He's gone to heaven, he said, to prepare a place for his disciples, for those who believe in him and follow him and trust him and obey him. There's going to be reward according to every man as his work shall be. That's exactly what the Bible teaches us in the New Testament. God made a covenant, a new covenant with us. If you love me, keep my commandments. My father will come and we will dwell with you and we shall be in you. See there? The presence of his power is the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, once you take that trust and obey and get that concept all through the word of God and all through the history of Israel, when she disobeyed God, God disciplined her as a nation. He's disciplining her even today. They're going through another test. God's people did not receive them. The Bible says he came to his own, but his own received him not. 
But to as many as received him, open the door of their heart and let him come in. To as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe on his name. So you see, it's all trust and obey. Jesus said, I'm the vine and the branches. We're going to get into all that. This is just all an introduction to what I'm going to be preaching for several weeks. And I don't want you to miss this now. You keep in mind that everything we preach as we study the paraclete saying, the words about the Holy Spirit and how God deals with his people and where Acts supports it in the Acts of the Holy Spirit. It's not the Acts of the Apostles. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit working through those that he planned to use to get the gospel around the world and churches and congregations of people like these on Zoom that meet together to help each other, to testify to each other of how God's working in their individual lives and how God has led them through all the temptations of the past week. And they've come out victorious. You know, they'll stand up. I've been to those meetings every Friday night around the corner from where I lived in Miami before I came here <laughs> to this wonderful place. Oh, friend, I wish you could be with me. I wish I could take you for a guided tour. I hope you'll come and visit this place. They're coming in now. We have a, I just heard this morning, a couple, a man and his wife, are coming to make this their retirement home. You know, they're working on that more and more, developing that right across from the garden of the gods. Now, is that significant or not? You just like a bird, you could fly right over the wall and be right there. As straight as an arrow goes in that direction. We could be there. We could be there now. We will have phones and we talk to each other. And we show them the picture of where we're broadcasting and where we're broadcasting from and who it is that's talking to them. But when you receive a message, do you know it's God speaking? Can you tell by his ministry in your heart? Now I just have a couple of moments to say this. The subject today is America grieving God? We're part of it. I am an American. I am every part of me. Friend, I want you to know, I love America. The land of the free and the home of the brave. Is it? Is God, we put out the fire, God is grieved with us? the one who redeemed us, the one who received us into his very presence the day we were born again, and we had a peace and a joy. Where do you think that came from? From something we did to deserve it, to make it happen? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm afraid not, friend. We're born of, through of, the source of it, of our new birth, is the Holy Spirit. Just as God was the source of our beginning in the Garden of Eden and breathed in the breath of, my, of life, we could sing the song now in the hymnal. Breathe on me, breathe on me. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Take thou my heart. Cleanse every part, Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Is that the song you woke up with this morning? That's what I woke up with. I guess because I was getting ready to share it with you. You know, I'm like that little girl that said in a letter she wrote me from Brazil, 
when I returned home from a two week camping tour with English speaking young people. You know what she said? On the fly leaf of her letter, she had printed these words. Don't just keep the faith, baby, spread it around. It's like that fire we talked about last week. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And all of those around, oh, oh and the fire, it sets their spirit afire. They all warm up and it's glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you experience it, it's flesh like spring. And everything you want to spread it on. And she had learned at camp that you went back to her English speaking high school in Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. That's the way they say it. Rio de Janeiro. And she started on her lunch hour with a few who were with her who came to camp that year and heard our messages on the presence and power of the Holy Spirit that I'm fixing to fire up again in the coming weeks. You don't want to miss it. You want to tell your friends to tune in. At least give us an opportunity to let them know what they're missing. And I want to say again, friends, in this closing moment, don't miss the best for the rest. That's the subject, Danny. Don't miss the best for the rest. The best that God has, he wants for each one of us. We used to sing a song when I was a young man. I mean, the whole congregation in the worship service. Give of your best to the master. Give of the strength of your youth. Clad in salvation's full armor. Join in the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example. Dauntless was he young and brave. Give him your loyal devotion. Give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master. Oh, my friend, he wants the best for the best. And his, his whole idea is our plan that we be conformed to the image of his son, just like we were in the beginning, before sin had touched us, before the serpent could deceive us, God said, follow me, walk with me in the garden. Sweet fellowship, walking with God. Can you believe that? I read a little book that my mother gave me. I want to give you the title today, and I'm going to say, this is my charge. This is my invitation today for you. I dare you. That's the book. It's probably still in print. Well, I was just barely old enough to even begin to comprehend it. My mother said, son, before you do anything, before you do anything after you pray, you read this book. I dare you to believe God, to put your trust in him, to put him first in your life, to give him the first dime of every dollar, first consideration in every decision you make, first hour of every day, and you'll be prepared do the first thing he wants you to do. To learn to humble yourselves. Now, what did, God, what did the Lord say? All the nations that forget God. How do you think the creator feels 
the one who's made it all happen, who's given you every blessing. The Bible said every good and perfect gift comes from above. How would you like, if you were God and in his image, how would you like to be grieved by people saying, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'll take my chances. I've lived a pretty good life. Good enough for God. Good enough to be a part of his glory. The Bible teaches us that the day is coming when we're going to share all the glory above. And we're going to sit around the throne of God in perfect fellowship. No more sorrow. No more pain. No more death. Sounds like paradise, doesn't it? See, there was a tree of eternal life. God said, you don't eat of that tree. Now, if you go back to the way of the world and eating what the world's eating and doing what the world's doing, where does that put you? Are you going to be in right relation to God when he comes? All things work together for the good of those who love him. Why? Because we do it for his glory and not ours. Why does that brother in that big church in the, in the Northeast say, give him praise and glory? Give him praise and glory. Because even the angels bowed before him. He created them. He said, we have guardian angels who guard over us. They're trying to help us to stay on the right path. The angels came to announce his birth. Glory to God in the highest and on, on earth peace to men of goodwill. We're to love one another like God loves us. Read, read 3 John. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. It's all about love. And God is love. So how do we learn about God? When Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, to that old carnal, confused, corrupt Corinthian church, what did he say? Love suffers long. Love is kind. Is that the kind of world we live in today? I'm sad to say, not where I live, not everybody's kind in this place. They better get that way if they expect to receive their glorious paycheck. God will reward every man according as the work shall be at the judgment seat of Christ. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, Paul said. The great white throne. Why is it a white throne? Because it's pure. There's a song that says, though our sins be a scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. Humble before thee as I humbly bow. Father, today, we beg you, we beg you that we'll have a new song in our heart, oh Lord. We can wake, we can wake up every morning singing, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. We want to learn how to have mercy as we've asked for mercy on our own selves when we were still sinning. And Lord, we sin every day. We fail to do what you want us to do. And that may be the biggest sin in our life. It's a sin of omission. We fail to obey you and trust you like you challenged us to do. Trust you for the peace and the protection and the provision that man longs for. 
that he had in the garden when he walked with God as a righteous man. When he walked in obedience to God, but she was tempted by the tempter. Oh God, some are going through temptation and trials that are bigger than they are because the only one second to God is Satan himself. He's the God of this world. And the world continues to bow down before it in anger and pride and all kinds of grievous sins. Wickedness abounds as it was in the days of Noah before the flood. Before God had to start all over again with Noah and his descendants. They never learned the lesson for me. And again, God had to bring correction to his people. God, I believe you're trying to correct us because we've been quenching your power and we will not trust you. We doubt you. Help us, Lord, to be a God-fearing nation once again. Because you've told us the fear of God is just the beginning of wisdom. How are we going to have wisdom to know what to do next? How is our government going to have wisdom if we take it off our money? We no longer trust God. We no longer look to him to supply our needs every day. Lord, that must grieve you. No wonder you're grieved. You gave us all this. You gave us this beautiful land. America, America. God shed his grace on thee. He crowned thy good with brotherhood. We've lost the brotherhood. Oh, God, we fight each other. We argue. We can't get out together and all together and put our arms around each other like we used to. Help us, Lord. Back to the disciples in the upper room after Jesus went back to the Father. And they came together, stayed together, and they prayed together until they got together. And then they went out to obey the commission. They learned to trust you and wait as you had told them to do. And they waited and they waited and they waited until they got the answer. We need to fall on our knees. Oh God. We have time for everything else. But like the other disciples, when Jesus found him asleep, he said, could you not watch with me just one hour? I wonder those who are listening, how long has it been since you called on God for a flat hour without stopping? Are you willing to pray again? From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, including the COVID, including the pandemics, including the wickedness around the world today. We're onward Christian soldiers marching as the war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Are we willing to take up our cross today is the question and follow Jesus. Grant it, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Goodbye for now. If Jesus tarries and we're alive this time next Sunday, God willing, we'll be right here to continue our message. I'm following Jesus. One step at a time, the path may be lonely, but his love I'll find.
It's a straight down way, Lord. And Stuart Hamlin wrote the song, The Way May Be Narrow. But he leads me on because he's the way. I follow Jesus one step at a time. Goodbye. God bless you. We love you. Keep on keeping on till Jesus comes back.